Hi, I'm Anna Alden of Anna's Awesome Applique Designs, and I am so excited to introduce you to my new latest design, Anna's Fancy Fans, which comes on a wonderful little thumb drive. By way of showing you what's on this design, I'm going to walk through how to make this cute little mug rug using the different designs of the Anna's Fancy Fans. In this, you're going to learn four different techniques. You're going to have applique in the hoop, quilting in the hoop, piecing in the hoop, and adding trapunto stitches. I'm so excited to share with you how this works and how quick and easy it is all doing it on the inverting machine. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in the rest of the video, and thank you so much for watching. To do quilting in the hoop, that typically means for my designs that you're going to use an embroidery batting as stabilizer. The name of this is actually called embroidery batting and it's by Floriani. And the reason why I'm emphasizing that is that it actually has stabilizer features to it and it will take the pounding of that needle going up and down. You can't just use your everyday run of the mill uh, batting from your local store. You need to get one that is definitely um, meant to be used as a stabilizer. This is the only thing that we're hooping. We're going to put it on top of the bottom part of the hoop and I've loosened it up so I can um, make sure that the inner hoop will fit in there because the border batting is a little bit thicker. I'm going to go ahead and lay that flat, press that in. I'm going to tighten a little bit here because I know I've tightened, made it really loose. I'm going to make the uh, batting really tight by pulling in on the sides. I'm pulling inward and then I'm going to go ahead and pull from top to bottom. I'm happy with that tight hoop. I'm going to tighten as much as I can with my thumb and first finger, but I know that I can't get that completely tight and I've got this handy little tool that will go on the end of that and look how many more times I'm able to tighten that. This is important to have a tight hoop because during the course of making the mug rug, you'll be removing this hoop from the embroidery unit to either press the um, blades down or to trim around the blades for an applique. And every time you remove the hoop from the embroidery unit, you have the opportunity of maybe popping that open if that's too loose. So what I have here on my hoop is a couple of different steps. As I talked to you earlier about, the embroidery batting is hooped So because I'm going to do some quilting in the hoop. And I start with embroidery batting to give me that quilting opportunity. I put my background fabric, which is this light white fabric, on top of the embroidery batting and I use the basting feature in my machine to do the basting to attach that background fabric to the embroidery uh, to the uh, embroidery batting. Then to do the trapunto stitches I went ahead and laid a smaller piece of embroidery batting over the lower left corner of my basting stitches and I went ahead and tacked that down so that this will be have an extra thickness when I go to stitch my trapunto stitches. I'm going to trim this as I normally would for applique, but I'm just trimming the embroidery bedding, and then we'll show you the next steps. What I've just completed now is my stitches to show me where to put the different blades. I went ahead and cut the blades using a template which is on the thumb drive, and I've cut two light colored blades and three dark colored blades, because this design requires just five blades. To start with, I'm going to take the dark color blade and I'm going to lay it right side up, lining up on that placement stitch that I just stitched out. I'm going to lay it nice and flat. I'm going to take my light color blade, do right sides together, and lay it right on top of that. That allows me to do the alignment of those two blades and I'm going to take this hoop back to the embroidery unit and I'm going to stitch that down. I'm going to show you how that's going to look here in a minute. At this point I'm going to go ahead and do that stitch to secure the two different pieces of fabric and this is the piecing in the hoop element. It just completed that stitch. We're going to remove the hoop from the embroidery unit and we're going to press that seam open. We have just I'll removed the hoop from the embroidery unit and placed it on an ironing surface. 
I'm going to pick, take my fingers and just press this over a little bit and I'm going to take my small craft iron and hold it down and press that seam in place. You're going to need to do this for each seam and there will be four seams that you're going to do that for. Now you'll notice that when I did that, this fabric, because it's just a wee bit bigger than um, needed, I think more fabric is better than too, too little, it will cover my placement stitch for the next blade. I'm going to take my next color, and this time it's right sides together, and I am going to make sure that that edge of my next color is in line with that stitch below it. And then I'll go ahead and do the stitch like I did a minute ago on the embroidery unit. I'm going to continue doing that for all five blades. So what I've done now is I went ahead and completed all of the five blades and that was your piecing in the hoop. So you'll see that these are pieced together and those are the seams and I've pressed each time. And then I went back and the, the final step after I've got all these pressed down is this tack down stitch which is the outline of the blades. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim these because this will be the applique portion of the blades. And I always trim from the last one to the first one. And the reason I do that, as you're going to see as I trim these, is that if I trim the first one, I can't get under where that fabric was from the previous one. So I trim from last to first blade. And same with the curved piece down at the bottom, I trim from last to first. Now this is trimming your applique parts of the fan. What I've done now is I've went ahead and finished trimming all of the blades. I've put an additional piece of applique fabric on top of that quarter circle and trim that. Now the next step is doing trapunto stitches. To do the trapunto stitches and the satin stitch and the quilting, I prefer to have that done with the backing fabric on there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn over the hoop, place my backing fabric on top, make sure it's flat, I'm going to turn it back over and I'm going to pin outside of those basting stitches. I want to clear the basting stitches. At this point, if I was making anything but a mug rug, so if I was making a quilted block, I would change the thread in the bobbin to match my top thread as well. But you can see my background fabric is pinned in place. It's flat. I've got it, the pins in the four corners. And um, I like to do that on the front here because if you put them on the bottom, they, they slip out and they get into your machine, which would be a really bad thing. And it, it, everything is secure and ready to go to do trapunto, satin stitch, and quilting stitch. So what we've done here is completed all the stitching with our backing fabric on there. We have the trapunto stitches here in the quarter circle and trapunto stitches in the fan blades. And because we had that additional batting, there's a little depth to that. Each one of these, uh, you could have different color of thread. Then we did the satin stitch cover for the inside and the outside of the fan blades. Both of these could be different colors. I chose to do the same color. And then we have the cute little quilted motif here. So all of these are the next set of steps that we've just completed. Now to make this into a mug rug, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the four pins from each corner. And the final two pieces of fabric, we're going to, we've got eight and a half by eight and a half. We folded them in half and pressed them. And I'm just placing it just about a half inch from the center knobs of each of the top and bottom of my uh, hoop. And I'm going to place this top one over about the same distance. So I'm covering my design. I'm going to put a piece of tape, and this is Floriani embroidery perfection tape and you could or you can use um, blue painters tape but the purpose of this is that when it does a tack down to tack down these two pieces the foot is not going to get stuck in that fold so we're going to go ahead and tack that down and we're going to trim and we'll have magically we'll have a mug rug 
we're just going to remove our embroidery tape from the back. And I like using these little tweezers that come in handy for all kinds of things. I'm going to go ahead and remove the design from the hoop. I am going to trim about a quarter of an inch away from that tack down stitch that tack down those two pieces. A few thicknesses there. I had to go over that a couple more times. Turn it around and trim about a quarter inch from that tack down stitch. At this point I would take the time to clip those little corners and turn it inside out and you'll have a mug rug. So I've turned the mug rug inside out poking the corners as best I can and voila you have a completed mug rug. Hi I hope you're as excited about this new design as I am and thank you so much for watching the video to create this cute little mug rug. I'm going to show you more options that this wonderful design has from making a cute little mug rug to a large quilt. So I'll talk to you a little bit about the placemat. The placemat that have is, I have here as a sample is completely different colors than the bright colors, but it shows you using the six inch block and joining strips, and these are all quilted blocks. It shows you the blunt end with one fabric. It shows you two fabrics with the pointy. It shows you one fabric per blade with the pointy and one fabric per blade with the curved uh, blade. So you have all these different options, both 6 inch and 8 inch. In addition to that, based on our little mug rug that we created, there's also a bonus file, which is just the quilting motif as well. And you can add your own little symbol in here, letter for whoever you want to make this for. It's a great way to make quick little gifts for your friends and family. And they go quickly together, or you can take a time to make the wall hanging or a large quilt. Hope you enjoy this pattern as much as I did.